Vandiyadeva had spent his life in the arid regions north of the river, so he did not know how to swim in the flood of the river. Once, when the border police arrived on the bank of Vedapena, he went down to the river to bathe. He got caught in a big whirlpool. The evil venom swirled around him and tormented him. At the same time it was pulling down. The whirlwind absorbed all the strength of the soon-to-come god. Can't survive any more, just drown in the vortex. When Vandiyadeva became disheartened, he fell out of the whirlpool of the river. The flood swept him away and saved him on the shore. When Vandiyadeva went back to bed that night, he felt the same sensation as if he had been caught in the eddy of a river. It seemed that he had fallen against his will into the vortex of a great imperial conspiracy. Can you escape this maelstrom of conspiracy just like you escaped that whirlpool of the river? Will God save himself again? The things he learned from the midnight meeting at the Kadampur mansion that day left him reeling. It had only been a few years since the troubles caused by the outsiders to the Chola Empire had ended. Prince Aditha Karikalar Mahavira, an expert in the art of war, Chanakyas in diplomacy. By making full use of his intelligence and the fighting prowess of the Chola forces, he completely removed the dominion of the dual zone King Krishna from the throat zone. The appearance disappeared. In this situation, insurrection and conspiracy have started to rise. What is the effect of this inner hatred which is more dangerous than the outer one? Are not the famous soldiers, ministers, leaders and officers of the Chola country involved in this terrible attempt? What kind of people were Pula Vetare and his brothers? What is their power? What is influence? How much name, fame, influence and prowess are the others gathered here today? Could this be the first such meeting? How many more places did the Palyavatarayar put Madhurand Hagar in Mudapalak and take it to? Damn it! How much has marrying a young woman at an old age helped him in this conspiracy? Until today, no doubt arose in Vandiyadeva's mind that Prince Aditha Karikalar belonged to the Chola throne. He never dreamed of a match. He had heard about Madhurand Hagar, the son of Kandaradatha. It is known that the son is a devotee of Shiva just like the father. But he had never heard that he was entitled to the kingdom, or that he could compete for it. That thought had never crossed his mind until then. But how about justifications? Who really deserves the title? Aditha Karikala? Are you an alcoholic? Come to think of it, there seemed to be justification on both sides. If the competition really happened, who would win? What is his duty? Aha! Did we start this pilgrimage from Kanchi with some kind of mental shield? We wished that the Crown Prince Aditha Karikalar behaved well and attained great positions in the Chola Empire. Did we think that even the original kingdom of the Monkey Clan could be reclaimed in time? It seems that whatever tamarind we hold as a tool for all this will break. Because of such thoughts, Vandiyadeva fell asleep for a long time after coming to bed. At last, on the fourth night of the night, at the time of the eastern dawn, he fell asleep. The next morning Vandiyadeva did not wake up even when he was told that the rays of the rising sun were Sular. When Kanamaran came and knocked, he woke up. Did you have a good night's sleep? That's what Kanamaran asked in the manner of entertaining a guest. Then he himself said, I came here after all the other guests had gone to sleep. You were doing Kumbakarna Seva very well. He said that. Vandiyathevan suppressed all the memories that arose in his mind and said, I know that I came here after watching the herd and lay down. I have just woken up. Ah! It has been so long. It looks like there will be a jamam. I must leave at once. Kanthamara. Order your servants to get the horse ready. He said. It's beautiful. You mean to leave by then? What's the hurry? We should stay here for at least ten days and go, said Kanamaran. No, father. My father-in-law is not well in Tanjavur. I have received news that survival is difficult. Therefore, I must go and see him as soon as possible and leave immediately, said Valavarayan. Then we must linger here for a few days on our return. Why, we'll take care of that then, now bid me leave. 
Don't be in such a hurry. You can leave after breakfast. I'll come with you to the river. How can that be? Who, someone, great guests have come to your house, leaving them. I have no one who is a greater guest than you. Candon said and suddenly stopped. Those who have come are great guests, but my father is there to take care of them, there are also palace officials. I did not talk to you for much time even last night. If only I could chat with you for a while on the way, my mind will be at ease. I will definitely come all the way to call it Kare. He said. I have no objection. Your choice, your convenience, said Van Diathevan. After an hour, the two friends mounted two horses and left the Sambuvariar mansion. The horses moved slowly. The journey was very enjoyable. The friends didn't even mind that the upper wind blew the road dust over them often. They were so engrossed in talking about old memories. Van Diathevan said after a while, Kandamara. Even if it was only one night in your house, it was useful to me. But only one disappointment. You were commenting about your sister on the banks of the river Vedapena. I couldn't even get a good look at her. When she peeked behind your mother, she only saw one-eighth of her face. Your sister has a little more of Nana and Matt than women should have. Kanamaran's mouth and lips struggled to say something. But no words were formed. But it's not a bad thing. You're the one who wants me to stay at your house for a few days when I come back? Then we'll see and talk. Maybe your sister's shyness will go away a little by then, won't it? Kant Hamara. What's your sister's name? Honey Cloud. Oh. What a sweet name. If only the beauty and character were as good as the name. Kanamaran interrupted, friend. I beg you one thing. Forget my sister, forget everything I said about her, don't listen to her. He said. What is this, Kant Hamara? It's a change of heart. Even last night you were joking about me coming to your house as a son-in-law. What I said was true. But then a different situation arose. My parents decided to marry my sister off somewhere else, Manamegali also agreed to it. Van Diathevan thought long live Manamegali. He said that. He had no difficulty in guessing to whom they had decided to give Manamegali. They are betrothed to Prince Madhurand Hagar who emerged from the closed palanquin. To find strength for Madhurand Hagar's party, they make all these relations. A scoundrel is a wicked scoundrel. Ah. You plan to make one of the rich guests who came last night a bridegroom. No wonder. I'm not surprised, not disappointed. It's just what I expected. How did you expect that? Who will give a wife to a poor orphan like me? What woman will agree to marry a man without a town and a house? If once the ancestors of my clan paid the government, what is it for now? Friend. Stop enough. Don't be so mean about me and my family. What you say is no reason. There is another very important reason. You will admit it when you know it. But I will not reveal it now. You will know when the time comes. Kandamara. What is this mystery you are talking about today? Forgive me for that. It's such a big thing that I can't even open up to you. Believe me, whatever it is, it won't affect our friendship. When the time comes, I'll run to you and tell you first. Until then, trust me. I'll never abandon you. Believe. Very grateful for this promise. But I don't know what the circumstances are that make me abandon it. I'm not one to depend on another for survival, Kant Hamara. I rely on my clothes and my handiwork. The occasion may soon come when we shall use that sword and work. Then we shall both stand in the same party and fight shoulder to shoulder, so that your cause will be united. What is this? Do you expect some war to come soon? Or do you intend to go to the war in the country of Elam? Elam? You will be amazed when you hear about the beautiful war going on in Elam. Rice and other foodstuffs must go from the Chola country for our soldiers in Elam. Shame. I have something else to say. Be patient, I will tell you when the time comes, 
please don't shut my mouth now. Okay, okay. If you don't want to, don't say anything. Don't even open your mouth or you'll see it. Vandiyathevan said. In fact, the flood of the Kalitapuri River was visible in the distance. In a few minutes the friends reached the river bank. Adi's new trend went ashore on that day. The other side seemed far away. The trees on the other side were like small plants. Vandiyathevan stood in awe as the deep crimson flood of water rushed towards the lower sea in eddies and eddies, making circular golems, beating drums, trying to break the bank, shouting ho. A stream stopped at Tanidura. Two runners were ready with long sticks in hand. A man had already boarded the boat. Looking at him, it seemed that Chikamani was a great devotee of Shiva. One of the boatmen asked, Are you going to come by boat, Sammy? Yes, he's coming, stop the boat. Said Kanamaran. The two friends jumped down from the horse. Have you come here without a thought? What shall we do with this horse? Can it be loaded into the boat? Vandiyathevan asked. No need, here are two men following us. One will take your horse from here to Kadampur. The other will come with you in the boat and earn you another horse while there. Said Kanamaran. Ah! How presumptuous! Aren't you, true friend? Vandiyathevan said. You would have thought of the castle like a cow and a woman. You wouldn't have thought that you couldn't take a horse into it. Yes, forgive me for thinking so carelessly of the river of your Chola country. Father, what river is this? What flood is this? Is it not raging like an ocean? The two friends hugged each other and bid farewell. Vandiyathevan went to the river bank and boarded the boat. One of the men who came with Kanamaran also got on board. The boat was ready to depart. The runners started scoring. Suddenly, from a short distance, stop. Stop. Stop the boat. A voice asked. The runners hesitated a bit without scoring. The man who ran with the cow quickly reached the shore. Vandiyathevan knew who he was at first glance, he is a true believer. On learning that the person coming was a Vaishnava, Saivar in the boat said, Leave. Leave the boat. I will not come in the boat with that bastard, let him come in the next boat. Said. But Vandiyathevan looked at the runners and said, Wait a minute and let him come too. There is plenty of room in the boat. Let's load it and go. He said. Vandiyathevan wanted to hear and know many things from all Alwarkadayan about last night's events.